Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1994. Today I have a motherboard here, a K8M, so very short and easy name to remember. It's an Asus board, it's socket 754. I got this uh, motherboard on a LAN party. We could uh, recap it because it has bad caps, I don't know if it works at all. So I figured this could be a good starter kit for someone because I do have a cooler that would fit here. Uh, the back is missing, but the back plate I do have, and I do have a cooler for that. Nice one, and I do have some RAM over. Because there's a long part in the next week, so I figured this could be a good way to make a few bucks uh, for the YouTube channel, so I can actually do, do more content. So uh, this cap over here is swollen, and that one is swollen. But these are bad, so all of them are probably bad. So there's also one over here, and the plenty of those, I think it's like 17 of that version. So it's basically like 5 volt trail caps, uh, 4 USB and PCI, and for other things like, uh, this seems to go to the chipset over here. And then you have plenty of them for the RAM. So, because I'm doing this a little bit last minute, so to speak, uh, a week before the LAN party, I have no time to order stuff. They, they could arrive like the day before. So I looked at my stash of caps, I have some caps up here. The only problem is that these three over here are 1000 microfarad, 16 volts because they come from a 12 volt rail. So the 12 volt rail comes in here through this uh, coil here and uh, into these three 1000 microfarad caps. So 3000 microfarads worth of capacity here, uh, 16 volt rated obviously. But there is a place for fourth one over there. So I looked in my stash and I didn't have these 8mm diameter ones. I could probably force 10mm in there. If I had 820, I could with no problem use 4 of those. But I do have 680 and I measured those in my tester and they are 700 microfarad, so that's 2800. Now there is a plus minus 20 on caps usually. So 2800 is like over 90% of uh, what we want ideally. So I think that will be fine, so I did uh, pick out uh, four of those, 680, and uh, those are low ESR FR, so really good caps. Uh, uh, these over here, it's no problem, I have that, also low ESR Panasonic. The the caps are also bad, these ones, they are rated at 6.3 volt and 820 microfarads. Yeah, these are uh, some uh, 6.3 volt, uh, 1000 instead, so that's fine. It's pretty common with 1000 here anyway, so I don't know why 820 was picked, it's kind of not that common. These are Yagio, however it's pronounced. Uh, I think they're part of Kemet nowadays, so the budget in terms of price at least, but apparently that's still decent. But the plan here is with these, is not to use them for all of these uh, A20. My plan here is to replace these three over here and the two over here, and we have two over here. They all uh, deal with 5 volt as far as I can tell, there may be 3.3 volt over here. Uh, the ones over here are for USB. Uh, those are for USB. So that's 5 volt. It's just bulk, so we can use fairly cheap, simple caps. So I don't think there's any problem using a cheaper brand there. And the reason I'm doing that is because I don't have as many as I like of the low ESR FR caps. So I have a bag here with uh, 10 caps, I think. So we will use that for like AGP. We have a voltage regulator here, I think. I'm not sure what's on here. It goes between the chipset and AGP. This is obviously also for the chipset over here, and that one is bad. Uh, then we've got, obviously, we can see here, the whole trace here, around here, this is memory. So here I want to use those uh, 10 uh, low ESR Panasonic, where it really matters a lot more to have good caps. It's not just bulk, because we're, we're doing DC-DC conversion switching. So yeah, that's the plan, recap this, I assume it works, now we're gonna test it, see if it works, then we we'll recap it, and we can run something on it. We are ready to test it, so I'm going to turn on the power here. Uh, the heatsink is just uh, standing on the CPU, should be fine for this. Got a LED on the motherboard. Let's see if it was power is over there, I think. Got uh, a signal here. I think the noise is the fan on that graphics card, it's kind of bad. K8N, so that's obviously the motherboard. BIOS 111. So yeah, the motherboard is obviously working. Yeah, despite having some bad V-core caps, it's running. And the CPU is correct, and half a gig of RAM. So yeah, seems to be a good candidate for a recap. The board is on the board heater here, and I removed the heatsink here. And I noticed that this is an M-Force 3 motherboard. 
So that is kind of nice because uh, they should overclock better than the via boards. The via boards usually do 218 or so from the stock 200. So you can take a 1.8 GHz CPU up to about 1.95. Uh, from what I checked, this should do over 240 MHz bus. So you can probably push, push the CPU up to about 2.2 GHz because usually you're limited by the chipset here rather than the CPU. Let's flip this over and remove all the caps. I'm gonna start over here and I'm adding flux because it actually help, uh, helps me when I remove these caps the, the solder tend to stick a little bit to the solder mask so this area here that is very yellow uh, this is supposed to keep the solder from not sticking it, it will just uh, stick a little bit to it so it just makes cleaning a little bit harder but I find that putting some flux uh, on the soldering mask actually makes it not stick so it's not much, not much for the solder itself as it is for the mass to stay clean. On the other hand you have to clean up this uh, the, the flux but uh, I find it to be less of an issue. I'm gonna add some solder back here. So I have something to work with, and I'm gonna try to remove the solder from the holes here. Plus, we need to clean these holes over here too. To fit a cap there. Make this all work.
Now, I want to check the caps here, the ones we removed. I just want to see what kind of capacity we had on that one. 922. So less than a thousand. And uh, this is uh, 680 we're gonna put in. So you can check that one. Should come out around 700. 690. So the new ones, uh, we're gonna use uh, four instead. We're gonna replace those three with four. And those four have slightly lower value, but this seems to be pretty much the same. So that's gonna work nicely, I think. Nice. These holes are a little bit tight here, so I guess I had a bit hard time dropping out by itself. So I figure we try some of these caps just removed and uh, see how see what kind of capacity we have on them. It should be 1500, 1600, ESR 0.0. We lost 4.7. So there's another flat one here. 3005. We lost 22.2 .2 ESR 0.06. And this is also a flat one. 2753 microfarads, we lost 26%. ESR 0.70 million ESR. I think the new ones, like I'm putting on, is in the uh, 10 to 20 milli ohms. So half or less.
Here, here's one mark bad because it's swollen. 777, so that's half of what we should have. 26% we lost 210 milli ohms ESR. So that's that's really high. That's like a more like a, some uh, generic bull cap. So it's uh, not good. Wasn't stone dead, but here is another one that is also bulged. Twelve hundred. We lost thirteen. Hundred ninety milliohms ESR. So yeah, crap. We really only have one left. If you want to check that one too. Might as well do that, I guess. This one hasn't bulged yet. 1500, we lost 2.8, ESR 0 0.00, so this one might actually be decent, good. <laughs> one good cap. So the motherboard has uh, been decat, so to speak. So we're gonna start over here. So you can see a cap list on the screen for this motherboard if you have it, you want to buy caps. So now I don't have uh, 1000 microfarads, uh, 16 volt with a diameter of 8, but I do have, like I said, 680, that measures around 700. So you're gonna put 4 of those instead of 3 of the 1000. So on this side you got the V core. So this is 12 volt caps for 12 volt right, this is V core. Around 1.5 stock. And these are uh, Panasonic uh, FR. So really good low ESR caps. We can actually measure one while you add it. So these are 1500, just like the originals. Rated at uh, 10 volts instead of 6.3, but that's fine. Same size, everything, also Panasonic F4, low ESR. So we got the VLAS of 1.6, almost 1500 microfarad. 0.00 ohms, these are really low uh, ESR, like none of the other ones except one I think registered uh, that low. I'm gonna add the caps for the USB ports here. Yagio, whatever they're called, I can't pronounce it. Uh, they're budget caps, but this is just bulk for the USB. This is, seems even overkill for that. So I'm gonna put one there. And this is for the other set of USB ports. So yeah, did I want fancier caps, but it's really not gonna be an issue since this is USB port only. Let's solder all this into place here.
So the new caps are in place. We only have uh, the small caps left now, the 100 microfarad ones. That is the board recapped. I'm gonna inspect uh, the caps for uh, orientation and values and so on. So I haven't installed anything wrong. That do happen sometimes. Uh, so always worth double checking. Still a bit dark here, but it was already dark here. Uh, and you can see it over here too, this ship here. It's just the heat uh, from the components, like the VRMs and the N4 ship there. I think with the clean, it's gonna look really nice. And then we can test it again. The motherboard is done. It's out of the oven after the cleaning. I've checked for short, but it seems fine. So what's left to do is to basically assemble it, put on the heatsink here, put in a CPU, some RAM, a heatsink, and a graphics card and so on, test it, and install an operating system so I know it's fully working. So we'll start with the heatsink here, put on some paste. We don't need a lot here. So that's the heat sink. So next would be the CPU here. So I have the back plate here and uh, the glue was kind of, uh, wasn't very good glue or double sided tape anymore. So I cleaned it up, removed that. So this is just the insula insulation shim, usually stuck on with the uh, glue or double sided tape here. So it goes on like that and then on from the back. So my plan here is to use a heatsink to do the system. So I have this Golden Orb 2, it's more like a salmon. Cool, but a different design and technique. So there's a solid uh, copper core here, and aluminium fins, and obviously a 92 millimeter fan. I think it's uh, it's about 92 millimeter. I haven't measured it. It could be a hundred sometimes too. But this is a good chunk of metal. It's probably over half a kilo. So let's see here. Remove the studs. They should go in here. Can still fall out technically, but uh, yeah. This core is spring loaded, there are spring on each side on every skew. It's very similar to a modern Nukta mount, which makes it fairly easy to mount. So, and then the fan cable. I did sleeve this fan cable just to make it look a bit nicer. See the CPU, a little bit of squeeze out of paste there, and our new caps. And here's the other side, a little bit of squeeze out on one corner there. So I got two sticks of uh, 4 mesh DDR here, 
it's not a lot, uh, but uh, back in the day, I, like high end was like a gig. If you were running like dual options that I did on like a more mainstream board. Uh, I had the um, MSI Master Too Far. I had one gig first, but to Corsair, and they were unstable and crap. So then I got two gigs of uh, like more uh, a Kingston's value series for servers and stuff. Uh, worked out a lot better. But this CPU I know had a one gig of RAM, and that was perfectly fine. Yeah, this is a beast of a cooler for that CPU, actually. You can overclock all day long with this heatsink. So yeah, I think this is going to be a nice kit for someone to own. So uh, let's test it and see how it benchmarks and stuff. We are ready for a smoke test here, so I'm going to turn the power supply on. Got blue light. 7600GS. Yeah. Let's run it up. Yeah, so we're in the BIOS. So it hasn't exploded. It's a nice CPU fan, 1600 RPM for its time. It's gonna be quiet. So everything is working so far, so I'm gonna install an OS so we can benchmark it. We're in Windows now. Uh, we can see the CPU here. We can also see the motherboard here. Uh, we got our GPU here, 7600GS. So now we can run some benchmarks. We can run to the Mark 2000 here. So, we ended up at uh, almost 15,000 points. Uh, it's about uh, 2,000 less than I got uh, on an Atom XP Mobile at 2.4 GHz with the same graphics card. So it's slower than that, but a 600 MHz difference. It runs at 75% uh, the clock speed, and we also run in memory at 333 MHz instead of 400 on that Atom XP. So, I expect the system, if I o'clock this, to beat out the Atom XP with no problem. So we can run some 3 d Mark 05 here. I think uh, the Atom 64 came out in late 2003, so 05 is like where the last driver for this chipset came out apparently, uh, that we needed for Enforce 3. So That was trademark 2005 and uh, yeah, under 4000 there. And I have obviously added my own benchmark program here, so you can run that just for fun. So let's run that in full screen, in benchmark. So 
Oh, 70k, they are in full screen, 720p. So let's check some temperatures. 1.5 volts, 8 nanometers. CPU at 37 centigrade. Uh, motherboard at 25. Yeah. Way overkill heatsink on there, but uh, whoever buys the system is probably gonna be happy with that cooling. So there seems to be nothing wrong with the system now. The caps have been replaced, so even if caps looks good, they can be really bad. We had very high leakage on the ones that looked fine. So yeah, fully recapped the motherboard and it's up and running and seems to be perfectly stable. So I think that's it for this video and have a nice day.